I remember a couple of years ago you said that you'd be interested in working for the JFF. Is that still no? <laughs> so you're you're comfortable with what you're doing right now? What you yeah, like? I have cancer, yeah, and I'm not well, yeah. And so anything I do, I have to be fully made motivated to do it, mm. yeah. So when I get up in the morning, or you see me driving a while ago with you, them, I just finished playing um, head tennis with them and training and everything, yeah. but I'm on morphine. You know, so for me, get up and go fight war with Jeff every day, every day. Yeah, no, me not about that. Eight seven six stream. All right, so guys, welcome to the very first episode of Behind the Lines on Eight Seven Six Stream. I'm your host Brian Peter and my co-host Javon Gapoor. Today we have a very special guest. Now, a few months ago, you might have seen the interview we did with Liam Bailey. Today, we have the guy that is responsible for the player's career, none other than Craig Butler. Pleasure to be having this discussion with you, Mr. Butler. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Um, a lot of persons in Jamaica know you as this um, enigmatic, very passionate individual who is often embroiled in controversy. But there's another side to Craig Butler, somebody who, not soft, but, you know, is very I can say passionate about football and you have a kind of love inside you. you. You take care of your players at Phoenix. How does it feel when you get the opportunity to train young people? Not just about football, but about life as well. Well, you know, thank you for saying those kind words. That's, that's, that's really nice. But, you know, I remember when I was growing up, my dad wasn't there. And I always had the issue of playing football doing well or trying to do well and I would look over and I'd see the support from parents um, for their kids and I did not mind it you know and I always said that you know one day I would return the favor that so many people like Jimmy Sinclair Mark Mendel even Bradley Stewart and the Tough Love and um, and um, Nick Padovan in my coaching college that they gave to me. So, you know, one of the things that you find with, with young people is they're not hypocrites. True. They tell you straight as it is. Yeah. If they don't like what you're doing, they tell you, you know? And I found that I belong in that world. Yeah. Cause that is your personality. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't fit in with the hypocrisy and the red tape and the, you know, if I want to, I don't want to curse my words on you. It shows, so I won't say the other yeah, terms right, that I would use to describe. But the reality of it is, it feels really good to coach young people, to 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 show someone something, watch them learn it, and do better. And I think the greatest testament to any coach is when his students surpass him. You know, then you've done a good job. Yeah. Um. Touching on that, because we had a conversation a couple of years ago as it relates to that, and the way you come off in the media, well, the way the media portray, portray you as a person is like, as he said in the intro, and for me personally and the conversation we had, the way you talk about the players, not just the football side of them, but the, the person from, of the players, um, it kind of it kinda touching for no say, you take the time for your know the man them and you know from a level where them can come to you about anything and that's the next thing to when we like with it because Bailey and the people always say yo them have a mind of them own and them listen to but it's just that the way you guided them they can they put a certain level of trust in you yeah. and I appreciate that from a coaching standpoint as well as a man you get yeah. me and so that's one of the reasons why I look up to you as a coach as a football brain you get me because the way you, you show them say yo I no, trust in you, I love you, and I want this for you. Believe you get me? It. And from you bring that to them, they, that, then give them that aura to say, yo, I'm here, the man still. Yeah. You get me? Something that's missing in Jamaican football, though? The, it, it, uh, As in the school, believe it or not, I'm a religious person, mm. deeply religious. And um, in the Bible, it's a raise up a child in a way that he should grow. And when he's old, he shall not depart from it. And it also says, the parent who don't discipline their child will weep in their old age. Mm -hmm. yeah? So when my youth them was little bit, any player that come to me, you know, if you have a kid and you bring him to me, you better be prepared to have a second parent. Mm -hmm. 
that have rights to say whatever he wants to say without the guide them. Mm. And um, so if you guide them properly when they're young, when they're older, they will remember it, remember it, remember it. There's a reason why Leon don't do drugs and Kyla and none of them, no matter what they're going through, you know, because they know that's not right, you know. And when they grow up, they try their best to, to do the right thing. When you, when you say that, though, it, it makes... Uh, so I'm thinking, you have some players, when they're done, they, they end up going broke or they end up having financial difficulties. Is that one of the things that you would probably tell Leon or Kyle? Or even your younger players now, if you make it? Make sure you have Every day. You know, when we, when we did our first, our transfer, the first thing that I did, you know, first and foremost, is go and buy two houses. Mm. One for Chippy, one for me, yeah. right? I will make the house big enough yeah. that we can put the whole of the family them in it and live in it if we have to. So we put some, put some a roof over our head. That's the first thing. And you know, when you put those values into kids first, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, everything else can come after. Yeah, you can bling a little bit if you want. Not you sure. can enjoy yeah. life if you want. Yeah. Why not? Go on some vacation, go some places that you never get to go before, you would not have been able to go, or you won't be able to go after again yeah, yeah, yeah. when you settle down and you're married and you have your kids and things and things. And enjoy and see life. Because God gives you a gift and you work hard for it. You know how hard a youth have to work to become a professional footballer? Right now, we're here. And the players just finished training from 7.30 this morning till almost midday. We drive back home. And I have to go wash out the car, wash the gears, wash the ball in, go cook them lunch, yeah, and prepare for the afternoon. That's, That's something they do every week? Every yeah. day. Every day. Oh. Every day. Yeah. yeah. And I don't care where they come from. Uptown, downtown, inner city, rich kid, it don't matter. When you're at Phoenix, one family, one other. Uh, we could we'll delve deeper into the discussion now. We have, um, so you have a new show that's coming out on Flow. Um, what is your objective for that show? Like, what, what do you intend? The problem is this, right? If you don't know, mm -hmm. if you're not going to have an opportunity to do what I did, how can we educate our country to the business of football, the real business, not what goes on here, yeah? And how can we advance our country's football and by extension of that, the income that people can earn yeah. and uplift the country. The program is designed to bring people like, as you see, Rimeniga is on the wall, um, George Mendes on the wall, Pini Zahavi on the wall, all these players that I've met and know, is to bring them into that show, into that sphere, expose the world to what Leon is doing, what Kemar Reed is doing in Malta, yeah? Even the trials that Kyle is going through, you know? Yeah. To overcome and go back yeah, well, to the top, yeah. Yeah? yeah? All of that is to show you what we do, yeah? How we do it, you know? And to help to change. Sometimes, from within, you're able to change a lot of things. And sometimes, from without, you'll be able to deliver to the public so you're aware. I mean, when I was started out in, in corporate, one of the things they said is cogito ergo, huh? yeah? And, um, and also let the buyer beware. You must be beware of what, be, uh, understand what you're going into. Yeah. Do you want to be a professional footballer? Okay, it sounds pretty. You're willing to train four or five hours during the summer every day? You're willing to not go on vacation to Miami? With your friend, you're willing to not go to your friends and, and drink and party. You're willing to dress like a professional. You're willing to learn to speak different languages. You're willing to spend a little time in a freezer so that you can get used to the cold. These are things that you better be prepared to do. And, you know, a lot of parents do that come and they say, boy, we, we would love for our son to join Phoenix. I said, for what? to take him out and say you need to go on vacation country. You know when Kyle Butler learned to ride a bicycle? At 14 year old. And the only reason he learned to ride it is because from Genk, where we lived in, in a town called Us, to Genk, you have to use a bicycle every day. 
and that the, the club give them a bicycle for them for a ride about a mile and a half to train in every day. Mm. So I'm like, ride on the train and ride come back. I couldn't ride. Remember we used to laugh at him because like an old man. A boogie passed him down the road, but him look a bicycle so <laughs> and kinda <laughs> wobble. I still don't know how to ride a bicycle, so it's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I tell you, it's, these things are important. Many people, Leon, yeah, did not get exposed to a lot of things because we have tunnel vision. Yeah. You know, jack of all trades, master of none. Mm-hmm. Leon don't know for play volleyball. Yeah? But anything that would benefit the football, table tennis, yes, because build coordination. Yeah. You know? But basketball, hell no. Yeah, um, to touch back on the topic of um, the show that you have coming up, how unfiltered is it? Because like, the reason why 876 came about is because you wanted some, a place where we don't have nobody to tell you what we need to edit out and this and that. But you're working with sports as a brand, as flow as a brand itself. Do they have any say in what you are? Is that all you? So everything we'll see. In fact, actually, we actually had to do a little bit of adjustment mm. recently to the producer <laughs> because she, she, for some reason, she thought it was business as usual, you know. And um, but she's a nice lady. She understood what I'm about and and why. And so she, I am in full control of the the content that goes in the topics that are discussed. Um, and they just give me a lot of support, which is really good, you know. And Flo is, has come on board at a time when this is so needed. And I'm glad to work with them. But it's fully unfiltered. Fully. The only thing I can't because it's bad work. <laughs> will, you, will you be touching on um, how Jamaica can progress as a nation, though, in terms of football? Because we know you like to talk about that. And yeah, I'm going to keep hammering it, um, keep putting it out, um, trying my best to, you know, maybe somebody hear it one time, but if they're hearing it over and over again and other people are seeing it, then sooner or later you're going to have to open your mind, you know. A long, a long time ago, you know, we learned valuable lessons because, you know, Leon nor any of our players played for the national team at all. And this was at a time when they were dominating youth football in Jamaica. And um, I think you have to really recognize what this is all about. And it is a, it's a huge problem. Isn't it? Yeah, but why, why, if they were dominating, why? And I know it's probably documented, but I don't think it's well documented why exactly Leon and Kyle didn't. Well, let me, let me share some things with you. How other countries are structured and rules that FIFA themselves have put in place. Other countries, for example, Belgium's football, FA, football authority, yeah? No member from a club is a member of the football organization. So the person who's the president of the FA, the vice president, the treasurer, the technical director, they, none of them in Belgium or England okay. are a part of a club. Yeah. I love my daughter. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And if I was able to put my daughter as the president of the Football Federation after I'm gone, I would do it. Yeah? yeah? Mm-hmm. Even though there might be people who would be better equipped now, when you add to that the potential financial benefits of signing a player in Europe for a club, and then you add to that that the player himself yeah, needs a certain amount of national caps in order to qualify for a work permit in, say, England. When you end up having the football authority of a country be made up of the presidents of the clubs that that football authority governs, you're going to end up with a selection process that is skewed in favor of the heads of the authority who are also heads of the club. So if you have a little guy like Phoenix, 
And Phoenix will come out of nowhere and beat up everybody. The first thing you're going to do as the club is you're going to say, listen, give me them two top players that come play for my club. Maybe yeah. I change. Yeah. Normally, the little smaller clubs are hungry. So they accept, accept. So accept it and them lose them big players. So when you look at all the major top clubs that were in Jamaica during that time, their players did not start out there. They start out at a Pembroke Hall or a Med Forest or a Bull Bay or whatever. And then before you know it, all the man must start out out of Bull Bay. End up above you. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. And the man must start at Pembroke Hall. End up a Waterhouse. Yeah. Yeah. See? So, and then you find, say, them man, you know, get into the national team, you know, the youth teams, real quick and fast. Yeah? So is that favoritism? It's favoritism, but it's also business. Mm -hmm. So to protect from that, FIFA says in its articles, you know, yeah. that there cannot be any conflict of interest. But if you look at even our national organization, you know, who let the man them come from? Yeah. Yeah? From the president that right down the line is associated with that club. And yeah, that's even when I was going to Woolworths, I, I would see like Woolworths and Casey man them trade with Halloween. So, so the, and then it's tied, the then you have the ties where the, the, the schools are tied to the club. Exactly. So, yeah. And so you move from the school into the club and the club into the football, um, into, the, into the federation, national teams. And Leon Bailey, at 12 years old, yeah. in, in top score, under 13, under 15, under 17, he was... MVP under 13, under 15, under 17. And Kyle right behind him. But they weren't a part of They were not process. considered for national under 13, under 15, under 17, nothing. Mm. But um, speaking of um, using the word favoritism, um, one of the things that the media pushes out here against you is that the, pl the players we build up, we bring up and build up and wine a Jamaica team is mostly Phoenix. So they, what they put out in the media is that when if we put you at the head of JFF, I'd be a Phoenix man who I've seen on a team. Is that a fair argument against you? And oh, what, what do you have to say about that argument? Because that is one of the main arguments. It's a logical team. argument. It's a very logical one. Mm. Because at this particular juncture, who is the top scorer of the Pepsi under 14 that shattered the record over there? A Phoenix man, a Phoenix man mm -hmm. from KC, Dujan Richards, who win Pepsi the other day as scoring an under in, in every quarterfinal game, semifinal game, and final, one nil victories. Dante Peralta, mm. Phoenix man. Yeah? The captains are top scorers from most of the youth teams at high school in Jamaica are mostly Phoenix players. You know Jason Wright, right? Let me, let me give you a little history. Jason Wright, Wolmerian. Jason Wright was at Phoenix and left and went and played for Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. National team immediately. Yeah? Kevin Atkinson was at Phoenix, didn't leave, yeah. top score Pepsi. Yeah? Played Manning Cup at 13 plus 14 years old, scored eight goals in four games. I know Kevin Atkinson don't get a call. So, Sean Laws left Phoenix, yeah, and went to Cavaliers. And from him leave, he went straight into the national team. Yeah? Um, Messi, Siobhan March, mm. trained with Phoenix for seven, eight months straight. Go to Europe with Phoenix. Play for Cavaliers. National team. Leon Bailey. Leon Bailey. Top score in the Belgian under 23. Kyle a top score the under 23. Two of them tearing up Europe. Them come down and in Jamaica. The scouts from Ajax and Genk come. Mm. Tapa don't call Leon all now for the national under 20. And it mean in Jamaica. Available. It's not like you have to go look for him. Sitting in the stands, they interviewed the scouts after. Because Jamaica lost the under 20 atrociously. At our home ground, mm -hmm. when every team came and beat us up, 
and um, the, in the report has asked the scouts, the Ajax scout and the gang scout, if there's any player that they see on the pitch that they would be interested to have join the club or, or think they can make it as a pro or whatever. And I said, no, but there were two sitting beside us in the stands. <laughs> you know, and sure enough, they were, they were in, in, in Europe. But look here now, it don't make sense to keep fighting yeah. against the authority. It don't make sense to keep fighting Tapar, fighting any of them. The best thing I can do is use the medium that I have, yeah? show the experience that we have, show how you should do it, and pray to God that them start to take the advice. I remember a couple of years ago you said that you'd be interested in working for the JFF. Is that still... No. <laughs> So you're, you're comfortable with what you're doing right now? What you're yeah, saying. I have cancer, yeah, and I'm not well, yeah. And so anything I do, I have to be fully made, motivated to do it, mm -hmm. yeah. So when I get up in the morning, or you see me driving a while ago with you, them, I just finished playing um, head tennis with them and training and everything, but I'm on morphine, you know. So for me, get up and go fight war with Jeff every day, every day. No, I don't know about that. Let them do what they're doing. Time will come. Through my example, yeah. they will learn. Right now, Europe, taxi in an leg. Yeah? Maggie somewhere, I think he might. He's in the... Oi Pen, but he's in a like second or third team. He's he not really doing so well. Because development was key. But right now, they're giving European, Jamaican players a chance in Europe. Yeah. Something that they never even considered doing before we went and did what we did. Nicholson as well is actually doing well. Shamar Nicholson is doing well there, right? They would not have even considered it yeah. had we not gone and, and broke through that mold. And so now, we're going to get more people going. The more players that go to Europe and recognize what professionalism is, what they should be doing, how they should be playing, what they should be expecting, sooner or later, the GFF will start to change and understand and adapt. Even, even some positive things I'm seeing right now. Um, Chris Williams, yeah? Nada Anichong and Lloyd Distant are now the vice presidents of the, the new um, PLC, not PLC, the Premier League Association. I don't know what's the name of it, but they're now the new vice president. Chris is the president, yeah? And those are very, very, very good, down-to-earth, intelligent, academic people who have a history and a background with football. Nadan is nephew, Dennis Chung Jr., is a Phoenix. Grew up at Phoenix. Look how life stayed you know. The founding members of Phoenix were three people. Chris Williams, Leon Bailey, and Craig Butler. Chris Williams, a founding member of Phoenix, is the president of the FA. They never have known. Yeah. They can't take it back now. Well, no, yes. Phoenix. Will be passed yeah. on. He will try to make the Premier League more professional. He will try to make them, them, the, the players themselves understand what ambassadorship is. Yeah. yeah? Because he, as an astute businessman, because Chris loves money, you know, and Chris loves make money. Yeah, don't feel that Chris just doing it for the love of football. He love money, I love make money. And nothing wrong with that. He has seen what I have done with Leon and my players. He's seen that Leon can speak four, five, six languages. He has seen that the, the way we carry ourselves will garner sponsorship and people will want to have you as ambassadors. And he will in turn turn around and say, listen, in order for us to to help you, the Premier League, to become better and to raise more money, you, the players, will have to learn how to carry yourself, learn how to behave in a professional manner. The game will have to be more professional. That would have to start from the grassroots. So everything yeah. will come. And I'm doing the grassroots. And what is happening? I have a picture outside with Mount Pleasant when they first came to maybe our 14th tournament. Yeah? Down at Arnett, we had it. And Mount Pleasant is trying to do what I'm doing. Cavaliers is trying to do what I'm doing. Um, Andre Virtues, Ballers is trying to do what I'm doing. And you have a million other academy and the clubs now trying to 
because them see the dollar sign later. So if they know this is the model, the model you have to use it. Then let me try. That's something we need to touch on as well because the, re the question I asked, I asked the question for a reason, and the answer that he gave me, I have to ask this follow-up question because of it. because basically what you're saying, and we don't want the media to take it and run with it. Me asking you the question of if I just um, Phoenix people you would have having at the team. No. The answer you gave would have suggested that you're saying yes. No. But I want to touch on to say, all right, so even if the answer was yes, you being in JFF, is it a case where you would have ensured that everyone, every, there would be more academic like Phoenix, so it will be Absolutely. But, Phoenix. but let us deal with a, a straight fact. What I'm saying is, not because he's a Phoenix, yeah. or as in the case of Kyle Butler, he is my son. That means that I would not put him in the national team if he is good enough and the best. I just said to you, a Phoenix shattered the Pepsi record playing for Kingston College. Yeah, they have the stats to prove it. So. so if he is the best striker in the country, I must be JFF president and say, guess what? He come from my academy, you know, so I'm not bring him in. You can bring in your player. That is the real favoritism. If the youth good enough. He could have come from Timbuktu. If he's good enough, yeah. he should be in the team. Yeah. If he's from Phoenix and he's good enough, he'll be in the squad. If he come from Harborview, Cavaliers, Dunbe Holden, Veer, Woy Woy, and he's the best, the best should get the chance. But what we're not doing is, we're not raising up the child in the way that he should grow. We're not teaching all the players to use both feet. We're not teaching them to play both sides of the pitch. Yeah? Why is that though? Lack of co quality coaches? What, what is it? Do we have it is, coaches here? Let's look at, at Belgium. Mm. I like to use Belgium because that opened my eyes to the real world. You know? Everybody else, they are doing it. Yeah. But Belgium opened my eyes. Belgium didn't qualify for one World Cup. And they, everybody said their football was sloppy and, yeah. and aggressive and just defensive. So the, the, the FA appointed a man called Michel Sablon. And Michel Sablon's job was to change how Belgium would football, the national culture of Belgium. So what Michel did, he removed scores up to 17 years old. So no matter how much you play matches against each other, which you do, it don't matter what the score is. Once you remove the score, there's no winner. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And then... He, they encourage playing attacking, creative football. You are allowed to dribble as much as you want, but with one condition. You give the same enthusiasm, enthusiasm that you did going forward, coming back and defending. Yeah? Use, they, did, they, they combined the clubs with the national team. Three days out of the week, you go into the national team training, the best players. The other three days, they train with the club. They, they put a manual in place as to how they want you to train. Yeah? You must do this, 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 and this. And everybody from the top to the bottom played 4 3 3. So now you'd have a kid that is 12 years old, already understanding how the national team expects him to play in his position, in his role. So our football culture was created. In Jamaica, we do not have that. In Jamaica, we are aspiring towards individuality mm. versus unity. And that is what the problem is. Yeah? So say for example, I love Carl Harborview name, but it's just because I used to play for Harborview at one point. So yeah. don't you know, me a ball, I know. Don't bother don't, 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 don't feel like say chippy them, wake up and just turn football. I mean teach them everything. Them yeah? So um I remember that thing I get from school. Like anytime the youth them go on, like say, them want to hike, yeah. pass it there for me. I want to show you something. This is my high school, school leaving certificate. You know, yeah. you know like, you know, the recommendation letter? Yeah, yeah. And if you read out this, you know, it's a template for how the youth them in Jamaican football must behave. I'm going to read it. It's um, 
Two yeah. may be concerned. Raphael Arthur Craig Butler, please don't shame me name. <laughs> Attended Jamaica College from September 1980 to June 1987. Having won a free place at the common entrance exam in January 1980 from Peter and Parker. During his seven years or at the school, he grew into a very attractive student who not only excelled as an athlete, but he was organized enough to maintain satisfactory academic standard. As a consequence of inter-high school football rivalry and the national press and TV coverage that it attracts, he became one of the best-known Manning Cup finalists during the 1986 football season. Despite the national ad adulation, which is important, he wore his success with humility, was made a prefect of his school, and was held in high esteem by both his peers and teachers alike. Should he apply the same discipline and tenacity that he displayed on the football field in any other area of activity, then success will surely be his and will be an asset to his family, his country, and his community. Now, if a next youth was to come at me and start high, yeah. so read that, huh? Humble. Yeah. Humble. And humility yeah. is not bowing down to people. You have to bow to a man or to be humble. Some of these yeah. young footballers, don't, they don't realize that they don't reach nowhere yet. Because I went to school with some of them, you know, with Georgina James, you know, them of you. Oh, Moon man. A whole month. You know, all of these By the way, Moonman came out of Phoenix, really? left Phoenix, mm -hmm. went to Harborview to get into KC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then go. And him get a couple national team call. Yeah. And then him dash away. Did that, that impact his career? Of well, course. Yeah. He never finished develop. Yeah. See, what happening now is you see something that is good at the time, mm -hmm. so you grab it and you want it. Yeah. But then you are not equipped to develop the player further. So wherever I'm stuck, that's where he is. Yeah. You have players, you know, that play Manning Cup, you know, that their development stopped at prep school, you know. But, uh, Them uh, just uh, get bigger and stronger. And that, that has to do with the thing that you mentioned with the Belgian thing, because if me in a high school, and me a win all of them things, yeah. me a win much, me a ball, I, you can't tell exactly. me, you know. Yeah. Why, and that, I guess that, you know, that you spoke about the Belgians, put that kind of humility yeah. in them, you know. You know, that's why I'm for always have that man I watch my back, Mark Mendel. Mm -hmm. In picture, is always behind me. Jimmy Sinclair, Mark Mendel. Those guys were concerned more about your personal development as a human being and on the pitch than to win cups. I could go back and look at some history now, right? I played for Peter and Paul Prep. When I played for Peter and Paul Prep, I could only toe punch the ball. Aggressive, you know. I could only toe punch. Nobody never teach me how to kick properly. You know? See, I like a kid playing now. And he gets the ball in his right foot. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right foot to the weaker foot, you know. And a man come and take it off his right foot. And kick it with him left foot and score. If you call any of them, you the outside them and testify. Mm -hmm. If you do that, and you score, and you win prep school, mm -hmm. what the coach going to do? No, I congratulate you. Jump up I and down, congratulate. Yeah. The whole, everybody around the field, you're a superhero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You leave there, sir. You go to high school, Pepsi. And you do the same. Your right foot, right foot weak, you know. So you take it off of your right foot, put it on your left. And score again. Yeah. What happened at Pepsi? So what stands at mashup, man? Place mashup. Yeah. You do it at Colts. You do it at Manning Cup. Mm. You win Olivia Shield. Mm. And you still can't use your right foot. Mm. How many players that when they reach a national level, them bust them in because of high school. Mm. And then when they reach into the national level, they can't make a distance pass from here so to the, over there so, yeah. with both feet. You saw the 15 minutes that Kyle played in that game for the under 23. Mm. You realize that the man make a 35 yard pass. I lick the chain back for them and nearly knock him out. From 35 yards. That's because he was technical and he didn't take any time to do it. That's why it was so good enough. Because yeah. it was control. Put boom. Mm -hmm. He never have to take it off him right and put on him left. Or off him left and put on him right. Could I use any foot and do it? When you go to the, the professional level, yeah, it becomes very technical. Yeah. You start to watch the videos. You're playing under like 
Leverkusen playing against Munchen Gladbach. Then I watch two, three, four, five, six hours of, of, of Leverkusen games. And when they watch Chippy, they made hurt them. That, that's the thing people don't realize. Chippy, Chippy really technical, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you mean if he's really technical? You know? Every single Phoenix yeah. is the same and as that Chippy. Is, that is something we can afford. Well, no? Every single one. Mm-hmm. If you call one of them from outside now, I said to them, say, what happened if coach that me take the ball out from my right foot? Or we can't put it on my left foot and score. What coach you do? I'm tell you, you have about a thousand push up. I would have run for the rest of the day. Cause I would rather you miss yeah. at the younger youth levels trying to use the right foot because that will help to develop it mm-hmm. than for you to win and I win at youth levels. What is it worth to me to say I win Pepsi or I win Money Cup? How much man in the world win Money Cup and can't eat a food tomorrow morning? Really? Yeah? Can't get a job the next day. Yeah? yeah? And how many people have 10 O levels and other security work? But as it relates to that, Mr. Butler, um, translating what you're saying into the Federation, is it, is it really, is it a lack of finance within the Federation why this is not being looked at in terms of in, 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 um, investing in the development of players? I or don't know. Really? I don't know. One thousand dollars means to have a day now. Mm. And we develop the whole of them out there. One thousand dollars and that decide whether you're going to eat party or you're going to put gas in a little jeep or whatever. Money does not give you class. Money does not give you application. It's not money why things are done. It's either lack of vision or lack of desire. Sometimes you're comfortable where you are. Be, but playing devil's advocate, Mr. Butler. You said that, but we are talking about the federation who is looking at thousands of people instead of maybe a hundred in your case with Phoenix. At some point in time, it has to be. I, I'm not saying I'm only at a cause, you know. I'm saying because, the, and this is why I'm really I look forward to the show that you have on Flow Sport because that, as you say, you're going to touch on the finance part of football and all that. But I, I, I'm trying to figure out what really is it because clearly there, there, there has to be football minds in the, in the federation. Looking as a fan, as a fan, there has to be some football, a level of football mind in the federation. So what really is it? <laughs> what really is it? The person that, that certified the coaches in JFF coached me for half a season or a season at Manning Cup. Mm. Coach me. <laughs> I think we understand what I'm saying. So it is not that I'm trying to bring down the JFF. Yeah, no, but I love the man and really start think about what I'm saying and make the effort. I don't want to be involved with the JFF. Yeah. I don't want to be involved with my, my academy and my players. Eh? Leon is a lot to manage. I Trust me. You're still his agent, right? I will always be his agent. That you understand? That love there? Deep. Yeah. You understand? No. What we might do in here is we might bring in a next little man who might be able to help us with a little window over there. So mm. We go through that window there. But I may make a decision. Mm. That, that's a perfect segue in, into the next part of the discussion that I wanted to have with you, particularly about um, Leon. First of all, sticking with the theme on, on national, do you, you think, for example, Portugal builds their team around Ronaldo? Argentina builds their team around Messi. You get the, the trend that I'm saying. You, you good example and not good example. But go yeah. Yeah. But Because sometimes you can't go too far. Exactly. exactly. But do you think that the national team should be built around Leon Bailey, seeing that he's the most high profile player? No. Why? Because the national team should be built around the national football culture of Jamaica. So and we should philosophy. identify what that philosophy is. Mm-hmm. It just so happens that Leon is the manifestation of that philosophy. Okay. Yeah? But, but if you are, so Leon is a product of a philosophy. You know? Don't feel like yeah. say. Him just get up and play, say. You know? The philosophy from Phoenix Academy. Academy. From me. Mm. I looked at it and I said, I'm a history. Mm. I love history. 
Jamaica was the, the, the first stop on the triangular trade route. Yeah. yeah? And so the slaves that were fighting the most to get away, still, yeah? And get rid of them in Jamaica. Yeah? Yeah. Now, if you tie up like this, and you travel for three months like that, and you still have five, forget to it? Yeah. Eh? Mm -hmm. There's two things. One, you're physically strong. Mm -hmm. And two, you're mentally tough. Yeah? yeah? Then they land them, drop them off in Jamaica now. You ever notice that anywhere you go in Jamaica is up a hill or down a hill? Jamaica has a, the tallest, um, long, tallest mountain range going through this in the Caribbean, going through the spine of the country. So anywhere you go, you're actually trading. If you look at Jamaica, at a Jamaican's car, always big and strong. Up until recently, fast food was not in Jamaica. So our genetics. Over the, over the years, you're dropping out. Man, I fight, forget to all the while. Strong, over 100 years of slavery into the country. Then now, Jamaica is beautiful, so all the, the, the great minds are successful people kept coming here. So you combine everything and it mix up now. Yeah? So till you get a player that is, has the strongest and most powerful raw material known to man. That's why we're faster than everybody else. But in all fairness to JP, that same tough mental toughness and desire to be individual and be the leader and to whatever mm -hmm. is what makes us unable to work together exactly. in team sports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? So Butler get to and Butler do the thing right and things are going on for Butler. No, we want to do it ourselves. We don't want to ask Butler how it's going on. It's so much, it seems weak for you to just... Yeah, to, to you don't want to bow to Butler. Who yeah. is Butler? Make him go. Yeah. We can do it to ourselves. We don't need the advice from him. And this is where the problem is. You see, Leon? Leon is fast. You know why he's fast? Them man, they had the back-to-back. -back 200. 10 back-to-back -back 200. Before every training. Mm. Sprint one, walk one. Sprint one, walk one. Him doing all track training, the same track training. Yeah. Like what? The Olympic team or the I used to be a track man. Yeah. You see them or something. Yeah. yeah? Now, he's getting skill sets and technical training from Belgium mm -hmm. to make him. And he's being taught both feet. He's being taught confidence. Mm -hmm. He's growing up in a 4 3 3 developmental team with wingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And an attacking midfield that sends a true pass. So I'm either getting it at his foot, where I'm isolated one on one, or I'm getting it running, where I'm faster than him behind the space. Mm. And that is how Phoenix plays. That is how he plays. And guess what? That's how Europe plays. Mm. Meanwhile, Jamaica's JFF Jamaica's still had the 3 5 2 and 4 4 2 and all sort of foolishness. But then, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. instead of adapting, so when the time came, Opportunity favors the prepared mind. Yeah. So when the time came for Leon and the rest of them to go and get tested, they were faster than their opponents. They're just as skilled and technical as them. They can use both feet. So now you have a problem. How do you stop Leon mm -hmm. the only The only way to stop Leon is to kick him down. On and as he gets older, he may get stronger. Mm -hmm. Leon is 23 years old. By the time he turns 25, he's going to be a beast. He will be the number one player in the world. Because Messi soon gone, no? And Cristiano Ronaldo yeah, that's soon a, gone. That's a ball player, man. I mean ball player. Yeah. Neymar are like 21st. First, first, first. First. I already yeah. said that Leon yeah. was going to become, when he was eight, seven, eight years old, I, there's a tape that had me saying, mm -hmm. we lost the under 13 final in 2007. Leon was 11 or 12 years old then. And I said it. I said, these players are disciplined, they are learning the right ways, and you will see them in the best clubs in the world. Mm -hmm. And he will be a professional. I said it. I kept saying it over and over and over all these years. When, when they, um, who was the technical director of the JFF one time from Harborview, mm -hmm. Vin Blaine. Mm -hmm. When Vin Blaine said, said, Leon Bailey is an average player and he's not good. Yeah? yeah? I said, all right, watch. Proven, right? Yeah? But it's not just Leon. If you ever open up the door 
and look at Kemari. The man is a beast. Which one is it? He's at um, Zayton Corinthians in Malta. And he, he hasn't yeah. been called. Never. Mm. Yeah? You look at Atkinson, everybody knows Sharky. Yeah. Mm. Sharky look like Usain Bolt, literally. Mm. Mm. That powerful, but with the technique yeah. and speed. But you don't call him. And we keep on the two of them. Yeah. The other yeah. But you know, really, you look on Kyle. Kyle is a brain box, you know. Kyle intelligent till he's sick, you know. Mm. And that gets him no problem with me. Because I'm overthink. You understand? Rather than just stick yeah. to what I know him, him supposed to do. He want to do all sorts of other things one time. Just to focus on him. Speaking on Kyle, though, what, what happened why he stopped um, playing football and ventured into the music industry? Kyle loved him father, you know. It is my dying wish, my wish that him honor what we set out to do. JFF broke his spirit. Yeah? That last thing with the under 23 he was captain of the team. Yeah? The team was winning all the games, he was motivated, and Tapa came and pulled him out mm -hmm. and put in Lambert. Yeah? Yeah. We, we and remember. take over the thing and Duki. I met Duki look like Duki was the bad guy, like you never know what he was doing. So yeah. that was the moment when Kyle said, Yo, I put on football. Ten minutes ten minutes you go in. You know what what I think it hurt him is when he went in, played with under twenty three, go on for the ten minutes, show the whole of Jamaica same as a quality player. And then they had an under twenty two team that was being selected. And he didn't get and you leave him out of the under 22 team, but him are the captain for the under 23? Yeah. That never makes sense. <laughs> you know? Yeah, How blatant can you be? Mm -hmm. eh? So, but the thing is, yeah, and him kind of just, I said, boy, I make him just use him, him, him popularity and him brain for something else. And to me, the dancehall thing, we listen to dancehall music. But the truth and fact of it is, when you are a role model for kids, all the kids in Jamaica look up to guy. Yeah? Very popular. Probably even more popular than Leon is with kids. Locally. Yeah, yeah locally. They love him. Yeah. Right? I believe him. Now, when you are a role model for those kids, they're going to do what you do. Yeah. Now, my goal was to uplift Geta Youth, mm -hmm. to show them a different way out. That not to pick up the gun. They don't have to sit down and smoke weed and the drugs. Yeah? They don't have to listen to the dad. They can try, do them academics and make it. But at this time, if you listen to dance all right now, mm. they talk about gun. Yeah. They talk about woman uh, the usual. degrade themselves. Gun they talk about drugs, money, mm. pretty care, all material things. And that's, that's not, not the vision, vision that you want. That's right? not the vision I want for Jamaica. Mm. And the problem is my good friend Kyle Butler is a catalyst mm. in any direction mm. where the next mm. generation are going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's, he's, in a short space of time, he's been a producer. He's actually been really impactful in the industry. Of course, top, yeah. top. Mm. But can you imagine how much more impactful he would be if he continued on with his football? He's yeah. 22 years old. Still has time. He's a baby. Look on Mendy was yeah. for Chelsea. Con Mendy wasn't a, yeah. a professional. Con professor. Continue. Finish what you're doing. Yeah. Outside of now, at the time, at, uh, three years ago, mm. outside of Kyle and outside of Leon, mm. Kyle was the most successful young player in the country. Mm. Because at 20 years old, 19 years old, Kyle had top scored the Belgian um, under 23s. He was playing for Genk, which is a professional club, doing well, playing with people on the national team in Belgium and dominating. And nobody else was near that. Yeah. So, for me, I'm proud of the decision. Yeah. And it's like him gone into almost isolation, I'm just focusing on the football. Donovan Duki has taken the time to start coaching him and rebuild him. Um, the family is supportive. Yeah, but he also has to understand in us. And it was big time. So where will he be in terms of 
playing professionally again. Like, what no man, January I ship him out. January I ship him out again, and him gone. Between now and then, I'm going to cut him and carve him and <laughs> rebuild him and feed him. Put in the food where he's supposed to eat. You know Rocky IV? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah? yeah With man. Drago? Yeah. <laughs> and what Rocky did that though? Yeah. That's how I'm going to go through right now. We don't want to see no woman, we don't want to see nothing. I'm actually glad that we got to touch on the car about that topic. Because of everything, everything I wanted to ask you answered. Um, but we don't want to stray too much away from the initial question that we asked you. You said we shouldn't build the team around Bailey. I want to get back to that. Because, and I, what I'm going to do now is integrate something that was said earlier with what I'm going to ask now. In the live where I had with Bailey, the IG live, he did say Jamaica have the ballers, the talent, right? For do more than just going to the World Cup. It's just how we use the ballers that is going to prevent whatever success we, get, we should get. Do you think, because you did say everything, most of, the, most of the ballers would have, would have come through the Phoenix regime. Not many ballers within the camp right now is from the Phoenix regime. With that said, do you agree with Bailey that the type of players that is in the setup right what now you mean? is good enough? The quality of the player them is high. High, high, high. So with that said, that's why I said don't build it around him. Mm. If you build a play, if you want to stop Argentina, you stop Messi. Yeah. You want to stop mm. Portugal, you stop Ronaldo. That is why they now win nothing. But with that said to Mr. Butler, the question I want to ask, because again, I'm going to start my preface it with not many of the players in the setup right now is from Phoenix. Mm. So we feel like said, people outside of Phoenix can be talented. Um, Absolutely. Because the reason why I do this you know, is because we don't want it to be a case on the media where they say, Butler say, you have to come from Phoenix with this. And so I no. bring it back full. You have to full. be the best right okay. now. Kemar Lawrence is the best left back this country has. And I agree, yeah? childhood friend of mine. Yeah? I agree. Shamar Nicholson has grown into a phenomenal number nine target striker. Yeah? I agree. Leon Bailey, super winger, Ravel Morrison, top. Bobby Reed, top. Yeah? But one yeah? thing people don't know about Ravel Morrison, you mentioned that and. Bailey actually was vying for that in the life that we did that we need to get Ravel Morris in the setup. Ravel Morris was better than Pogba in the Manchester United yeah, he was the best. Um, you, academy yeah, team that he was won the best everything. Best you know. The more you give quality players around Leon, is the more, especially if they're playing in Europe, mm -hmm. is the more they'll understand his runs. Exactly, yeah. So you're trying to build a team around Leon is okay, give Leon every ball. No, you can't do that. We have a thing in Phoenix over so call. You have one two. You know one two pass? Mm -hmm. I give you and you wow. give me back. Mm -hmm. We have one six in it. <laughs> How that go? Me one, give you. Two, one, yeah. You give him. Yeah. You give him give him. Him give him. And me are run. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah, get yeah. it way around us yeah. in a yeah, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah? You have the play in your mind from your past the ball. Yeah. yeah. But it is a movement and this yeah. is the culture. From you have the culture, you know. Suppose you say, let us establish, right? When I say a football culture and a system, it is totally different than a formation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? So a system would be, say you have a formation of a 4 3 3. Yeah, but the system will be like ticket back or something. No. So the system is, I say, wing back when you get the ball, your first option, just this is you can do a different one as your first option. Mm -hmm. Your first option is the gate to the hole in midfield. Inside, yeah. Okay. Yeah? Your second option is the gate to the attacking midfielder come up the top of the diamond, the triangle. Your third option the is line. to play it to the field, field of the line. Your fourth option is to whip it to the far. Yes. Okay, okay. So what we said, we start with that precedent for the wing back. What is the first thing the holding midfielder know that he's supposed to do? Japan, when the wing back get the ball. Japan, okay. Are you going to get the ball and yeah. say, better go feet? Now, when I know as the winger, that I am the third option. Yeah? I'm not going for it, you know. Mm -hmm. I go up the line yeah, because I know, say, he's going to get it. 
And then we said to the whole in midfield, okay, your first option would be to give it to the attacking. Yeah. Mm. And the attacking, your option is to tread the needle. Yeah. Through behind the back of the space between the it, so the winger can get it. Do it to the winger already. So the winger that way come down and so for collect the ball from the wing back. Who wants him to that on? And then you create a culture. So the man, the man. Oh, Come yeah. in up. Oh, right, right, Jersey, man. Come yeah. on, come in. Lock the door. Oh, God. Lock the door, <laughs> lock the door, lock the door. Yeah. yeah, so your third option, right, would be come in. Lock the door and come in. You can come in, sit in. All right, yeah. So your, your third option, you said, you said? Yeah. Not pretty Gucci, not straight gears. Mm. Right, so the you thought so people will recognize that now you are creating a, mm. a system. When that system is now used by all the players and understood by all the players in the country, mm. it becomes a culture. Yeah. Yeah? And that's the problem with the man down at the JFF now I get. The Jamaican area yeah? the culture. Football. So to create the culture, you need to establish a system and make it trickle down yeah i want to hold you at that point because that leads um easily into a next question that i have for you the current the recent um Squad. strategy of going for english-based players that we see the jff adapt um do you think that that's a a a, a matter of them trying to create a a, a system or a culture or is it really just because me personally as a fan I feel like this is the golden age of reggae boys in my lifetime since I've been alive this is the best set of players I've seen around in Jamaica is that a way of them saying yo I could put everything in other squad yeah, win now and forget about and worry about the system and everything later because we have talent right now so we just bring them the best talent around or is it them actually attempting to build a culture you need to understand that football is like chess every Phoenix player will learn to play chess Football is like chess. You have your pieces and you have to be a mastermind behind it. Mm. But in order, every rook, you know the rook, you play chess? I play chess. You play chess. <laughs> every piece in a chess mm. move a particular way. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. And you use them knowing that that's how they move. Mm. Now, every footballer that play a wing in a Jamaica is supposed to have an understanding of what his role would be. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Now, and this was what Leon was trying to speak about, but he not really elucidated correctly, right? Now, when you have players who are playing all over the world, each place in play play a different system. So wherever Ravel Morris now play, they might play a, a formation and a system. Mm -hmm. Wherever Leon play, they might play a formation. And about a hundred different systems in other coach and minor liver cousin. Yeah? Because I'm brilliant in about mm. sometimes too brilliant. Good, good, good coach. Yeah? When you turn around and you come back to Jamaica for seven days, there is no way on God's earth you're going to be able to play a system. It's Tower Babel situation. You're speaking different languages. Yeah? Now, people watch football and mm. go in the stadium and cheer. But they don't reala realize how actually yeah, it's, it's, a it's a language you're speaking of. Exactly, yeah. You have to communicate. Now, when you have a system from the roots up, yeah, mm -hmm. which everyone in the country understands, when they leave mm. and come back, they will know what their they system is to play. What, yeah, exactly what they're getting. Yeah? So when Leon hit out at top at the time for using 35 or 37 different players in a qualifying tournament, yeah, and you're looking at players, it's not the players you're supposed to be looking at. It's the players supposed to be looking at you. Mm -hmm. What exactly is it that you want me to do as a winger? So when I come to Jamaica, this is what I do. And this is what exactly you want me to do as a striker. How you want me to move? What is my first option you want me to do? So when I come to Jamaica, this is what yeah. I do. Because when I move us up, they want me to do something else. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? So it is not about building a team around Leon. Leon will shine in a system 
where there's proper communication and understanding. And everybody else will shine. Yeah? You look at a Brazilian national team. You think so them man they just not knock it because them come from different different countries and when they play and when the clubs play and when they come there, they just automatically understand one another. Mm -hmm. They are getting that from their six, seven years old. When Leon comes back to Phoenix to play, I don't you ever watch me coach a game at Phoenix, eh? No, we probably should be there. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully one day you can I really want to. Yes. You'll see me coach. Oh, do yeah, you see me actually coaching or you see me laughing and I run joke and him something? You tell me to say, shout out for a player, man. Yeah, man. Bad them up as a idiot, boy. You're not good at it. I'm having fun. Yeah. Because I already did my work four years ago. They already know what the wing are supposed to do. It, who's supposed to step on the, wine, the line mm -hmm. or not? When at particular points. I have one day, I'm going to play them shoe shine, you know. Came over to the line and I match and I said, well, draw your foot on it, so. mm. Don't come off of the line. Stand up. Game of bill over so. Tack, 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 tack. Kyle get it. Boom, one switch. Mm. Switch a point of attack. And him gone. Goal. Yeah. Come fast like plane. Mm. And if the pass is accurate and powerful enough from that direction where everybody shift over to. Mm. When him get him have acres of space to go. Yeah. And that is the type of thinking that we should be, we should be employing as a national team. That guy shoe shining, you know. You know real and basic? That is one of the best talents we have that is not known in Jamaica. Really? He went to the final with Charlie Smith one year. Left wing. I took him to Europe, Milan. All over the place. Take him out of Turkey. How long ago was it? He's here right now. Shoe shining the player with Wayne and them um, in a Charlie Smith days, Wayne and what a big, the touch, the big striker name. Nicholas Martin, Michael Martin, yeah, and he played with. Yeah, 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 man. Played oh, that year then. I remember that year then. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Play left wing. But we take him and refine him. Shushan fast, like Leon and Shushan up on the same speed. Mm -hmm. If not, Shushan might all faster than him. Yeah? Skillful. So, I mean, Shushan. Eh? Yeah? <laughs> he soon shine. Soon shine. Then, him name him. So, him soon shine. From little, him oh. say, him soon shine. Okay. For me getting on call him shoe shine. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody just call him shine now, you know. But the, the reality of it is is the system that you need for employ. Yeah. And if I employ the system properly, Leon gonna get ball. If he does I try to give every ball to Leon, it not gonna work so. You have to get it where you build it up and you can't play a long ball with a Leon Bailey, which we tried to already. That not gonna work. You said in two years, Leon is going to be the best player in the world. Where, would Le where do you see Leon Bailey in two years? I'm sure it's not Leverkusen. So, he, he can't be the best player. Wherever Leon will be, he will be the man. Look on the terms, you know. He will be the man. He will be the player in the team. He will be making a lot of money. Because football is not a... Your career is not forever. No, the next step has to be a good, really, really good package. Mm. Yeah, where he can help the family, help the academy, help himself and put on something for, right, so for retire forever. So, so Manchester City, they're very good right? for Wait, no, wait, no. no. <laughs> and he would be ready. Yeah. You know, as a youth, when I was 22, 23, by my first son, CJ, and I was still so in my loads. I was still wanting to have fun and party and chat and rare. But when we get my son, mm. look at him face, I realize that anything that I do, he will be able to read about and see yeah. and know later on. And I know so I have to set a good example for him. Then I change how I operate it. If you watch how Leon is behaving now, you're not seeing on him Instagram the bling bling. You're not seeing on him Instagram anything but family, football, and focus. Mm -hmm. Leon is not saying, oh, I'll play any position you want to play. I'm a right winger. That's why I'm best at. Yeah, yeah and I, I wanted to ask about that. Sometimes, sometimes the team at left wing, wing back, back and, you know, in defense and right, right wing, left wing, striker. He was raised to be able to play all points, yeah. every position. So that's no problem to yeah. Leon. So he's not a problem playing, but. 
I'm sure you prefer But to I don't have a problem playing center for or center forward. I was an all American at center forward at BU. But I am best as an attacking left back. Yeah? I will be able to succeed at would have been able to succeed at the highest level as an attacking wing back. Yeah? Come gone. Leon is best at right wing. Okay. Okay. He can use both feet. He can go down the line and cross. He can cut in and whip it with him left foot. Dangerously. He can cut in and boss it with him left foot like Roberto Carlos. He can do a curl enough. And if you notice the last couple of games, he cut in and drive them too. Yeah. Yeah. The goal where he scored the other day is not like a curl. The first goal he scored. He's driving, driving. Come and say, Chippy, we're tired right now, man. Mm. Stop making everything perfect. Yeah. I teach you to drive the ball with the laces. Yeah. Use it. Yeah, come on, but Europe, Europe only the first goal I see. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Go some big them, boss it, yeah. drive it, yeah. Come on, go under the keeper amongst the net, yeah. yeah. Be brave. No, that header that Leon scored, yeah. Six months ago, <laughs> you wouldn't have seen that. No, hungry, passionate. He wanted to give up. I wanted to touch on that. Um, because he had a dip in form. No. It, well, injury and all of that caused it. But no. there was a dip in no. Mr. Butler, yeah. no. with all due respect. No. The, what me expect no. from Bailey, no. me never had a seat. No. It, with all due respect, no. I wasn't seeing what I expected. No. I'm going on statistical. No. Statistical. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Worse, no. <laughs> statistical. Hold up. Do the maths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leon. A superhero. If you tie up a superhero in a cage, you can't defend him. Listen, he said stats, but when he would stats. Diaby played almost every game. Yeah. Leon Bailey played half the amount of games, and he had either equal or more assists than Diaby. Mm. He scored equal or more goals than Diaby. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So statistically, he didn't drop. He played less games and scored five or six goals. But he Wait now. He played all the games the season before and mm -hmm. scored nine goals. Right. So he can have a different form. Well, no, Mr. Butler. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Second thing, man. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna worry. <laughs> Second yeah, thing. Right. Yeah? Leon was put on the bench. Yeah. And if you take Messi or Cristiano or Ronaldo, or any of the greater players in the world that have any form of bonus mm -hmm. and backbone. I take them and give them 15 minutes a game. And somebody come on and play over them. Mm -hmm. eh? When they come on the pitch, you're not going to get the same. You need time. Yeah. By the time they warm up the game done. Yeah. And then, when you're done, mm -hmm. you take him and you put him to play left wing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is not his business. Where yeah, players have them play different positions and play different way. You know. When Chippy play left wing, and it's a runner. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna take it, to, run to the line and cross it. That's what I'm gonna do. You put him on the right wing. He might kill it with Chip. Mm -hmm. He might cut in on him left foot, wicked him, can whip it. I'm trying to try block it. He might cut it on the right and go down the line and yeah. bomb it or cross it. I get that right after Mister Bola. So he did not have a dipping form. He was not allowed to play his position. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, he went to Leverkusen as a predominantly right winger from Genk. Mm -hmm. That was best player in the Belgian Pro League, youth young player in the Belgian Pro League, um, team of the season in the Europa League. That was Manchester United, and everybody I played that time. Won the goal of, yeah. goal of the season, goal in boy nomination. I you take him. First season he played the right wing. Mm -hmm. I take him and bring in other players. I take him and force him up on the left wing. Can he use the left foot? Robin, can he use the left foot to you? Know, see for the right wing, yeah? left wing, yeah? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah? But, but I'm sure at some point he had to create a relationship with the coach and the coach understood. Mm -hmm. That's where he means that he can't bully a coach. You have to respect him and find a way to get the message <laughs> across. Yeah? Which he did. And he looks, he looks like he's getting back on form now. But um, there was no dipping form, you know. Yeah, oh, yes, no dipping form. Did you say a dipping form? 
What? No, you re- li- li- all right. Mechan- mechan- all right. So me can't tell me. My claim. Give me. Give me these three things. Me can. Anytime it was on the right wing, you saw the pin form. No. Anytime him start, you saw the pin form. From what I expect, yeah. For so yeah, At, for the level where me I expect from Bailey, I'm look. Listen. I'm the Kai Havertz. Really Kai Havertz scored a lot of goals. I didn't went to Chelsea. Who passed the ball game? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that. I get, uh, that's the last season we're talking about. All right. You talk about building a team around a player? Mm-hmm. How hard did Havertz have to work to get those opportunities to score? Chippy literally get a ball. On the left side of the pitch, and all my fellows kick it on the goal. So. Yeah, yeah. And then roll it, you have a try. I was watching the kick the ball. Yeah, man. I am at home, I'm a tear out me here. Yeah? Because people don't realize how humble are you that you are. Mm-hmm. Him humbly, humbly, humbly. And him don't want to rock no boat, and him don't want to argue. Him don't want, him don't want me fight for him with JFF. May I tell you? He don't want a war. Mm-hmm. Want peace. He made yeah? a picture to that under him. Yeah? He love peace, he want everybody to get along, he want, he want to, to be seen as, as, a, as a quality, decent youth. All of them, Kyle Which too. is who he is, which yeah? is what he is. Which is what he is, mm. yeah? But people take him, them, all this COVID-19 thing the other day. Would, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that yeah. wasn't really public, publicized. It, but I think when he was at um, the beginning of the COVID thing, it helped out the community. What do you mean um, they help out the community? The, you know what work we do yeah. for Jamaica? We give and out food, we don't, we don't, we don't even fight that. We give out food with the back to school, with this uniform, with the book, with the yeah. this, with the that. We got to take our lady when on a foot and get a wheelchair, with every possible thing we can do. Yeah. Right? To help our country. Yeah? yeah? And she go like a party. He get one and a half week break for Christmas to come down. I go to the little party to go support you, see? Mm-hmm. Who is in friend? And right after a nomination day with the entire country out in our orange and green. Yeah. And nobody are wearing masks. You attack the youth? Come on. This is Raheem Sterling. This is Leon Bailey. This is Usain Bolt. This is Ricardo Bibi Garda. These are people that put our country on the map. In case you never know, it's them make tourists want come to Jamaica and want to find out more. Yeah. Is Leon Bailey, may I tell you right now, so you can take that go tourist board, Donovan White. A Leon Bailey make people want to come from Germany and Jamaica more. A Leon Bailey make people want to know what's going on with our country. So don't for one second think, say, you can take our, our icons and pull them down and then expect them not to be repercussions internationally to how people see us and my brothers keep up. Yeah, they mess up and shouldn't bother go hold a party. They shouldn't do it. Me cuss him too. When I go to the whole I world, like, yeah, something yeah, if yeah. we need to go and broadcast it, I want, oh, we're going to press charges on them or we're going to mm-hmm. find them. Or, for what? If you're going to do that, you have to find every politician in Jamaica. You know, I'm a rate with that national team baller. Every single one of them, rate chippy. Them rate them one another. Them love one, one another. And them are quality players. Yeah? But... If you listen to your players, then. you know how much of my players actually coach the team when I not, I just go match and say, yo, you coach today. Make them get that experience. The buying builds loyalty. Mm. You want loyalty from your national team, Mr. Tapper? You be, make them buying, to buy into your philosophy and listen to what theirs is and incorporate it into your one. Mm. It's a family. Football is about communication, about love. And if you don't have that, it don't make no sense. I think, I think that's a perfect way to end it. Yeah. Um, but before we end it, though, one person, you think we're going to make the record for it? Absolutely. Perfect. I think so. Yeah. Whether them yeah. kicking and screaming. Yeah. With the players they have right now? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Because guess what? They're going to find you, you know. They're going to find you, man. The only problem they will have is exactly what Chippy said. Stop the experimentation. Make the man get a chance to play with them one another. When they get to understand them one another. Nobody look for no more left back if you have ta- taxi. Get two back up for him. Yeah? 
and have them a train at the back background. But I'm going to look for no man. If he's there and he's available, put it on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. Leon Bailey there, put it on the pitch. Nobody say you're not going to call him this match because you want to try out some other players. And, and, and let, the man board, went, first of all, why don't call a player to national team duties? They don't have nothing to do for that whole week then. Mm -hmm. Everybody else who is at a top club, gone for them individual national teams. And you leave him at his club, sitting down, doing nothing, having to train by himself. You think he's going to like you? When he could have come down here, even if it's a little easier match, a little easy match, he could have come down here and could have played with the man, the man even Bill of Vibes. Mm -hmm. Yeah? The national, people don't know this. And I'll share this with you and then you can not cut off anymore. I was Jamaica's biggest sponsor during the 1998 World Cup campaign. I was the one that came up with the adopter player program. I adopted Peter Cargill in my company. I paid him a salary of 30,000 Jamaican at the time, which would be like 300,000. And I utilized him in all of my marketing. And I encouraged the rest of my friends who was in corporate at the time to adopt the other players. Because there was no salary being paid to the players. Mm. The man them never had nothing. And same top of him was a beneficiary of that. Mm. Right? Yeah. And as a result of that, with Rene Simois, all the equipment that them have, them computers, everything is me the captain. Rene Simois laptop and used for the national team and me gave me. Yeah? Now at the end of the day, I was able to see because of that and that camaraderie then qualify for the World Cup for the first and only time. Mm -hmm. Yeah? If you want it to happen again, yeah. you need to do what you did then again. Yeah. Rene Simo is there on the back of him shirt. Jesus says, yeah. mm -hmm. pray together. Unity was there. We are worried about Craig Butler for Craig Butler got dead and gone one day. Take what you can get from Craig Butler while from Craig Butler while he's alive. Mm -hmm. Take the knowledge from me up, take the experience and contacts from me up. Use it yeah. for the benefit of the country later. Uh, me, Ricketts, you, Leon Bailey, everybody is only here for a short period of time. So it is not how you die that will be important. It is how you live. And that is what we're missing in this country. And uh, that's a perfect way to conclude, isn't it? Well, we just want to thank you again for inviting us here and agreeing to talk with us. I, I, I actually enjoyed the discussion. Went long, way longer than I expected, but, and that is good. As I said, I'm supposed to go to a program, yeah. I guess, huh? <laughs> Have a surgery Monday morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, wife, I got killed. Yeah, I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best in whatever it is endeavors that you have to do and just appreciate it. Eight seven six stream.